Today we will be demonstrating response modeling or credit card scoring model using our business predictive workbench on the credit card data set. For that we will be using our R environment. Let's open credit. So this is a model that we have created by dragging and dropping various components, connecting and configuring them using our predictive workbench. We will run this workflow. While running, you can see the progress bar here which will show the running status of the workflow. Also in the console tab, you can see the algos in action which are running and are being completed. So in this workflow, we are, so in this model, we will be predicting who are the good or the bad customers. We have kept two categories as good or bad for credit card risk. So if a new customer joins, uh, this model is able to predict whether he's going to be a good or a bad customer. Understanding the model, the first component is a data service con is a data service component. For this, we have accordingly chosen data connector and data service, which contains the credit card data. This is the result of this component. So it has 20 variables and one dependent variable which is good or bad. It has historical data of the customers. In the summary, you can check the summary of the model, the component. Next, we have data type definition component. So in the data type definition component, this has been used to convert your string into the factor. We can check this in the summary. As you can see the factor here, also the result of this component. Next to that we have customer script component. So we calculate the information value for independent variables using it. This is the component. So we have written a custom R script for that. We we'll like to see the script. So this is the script that we have written. These are primary function details related to that component and a few settings where we have chosen to consider all columns from the previous component. Let's define predicted columns, property view definitions and a few parameters related to it. In simple words, we are finding how the independent columns are influencing the dependent ones here. This is the result of this component. If we go and see the summary, so it has three columns which says variable, information value and how good. So on the basis of the information value, we have categorized into the prediction score of being very good, medium, very weak or not a good predictor. So we see the variables having IV greater than 2% are considered as better predictors. Here we have 15 independent variables. So we will be reducing it to 10 for so we will be reducing it to 10, neglecting the not a good predictive values. For this purpose, we will perform dimension reduction using hierarchical clustering through a custom R script. For this, we have chosen this component and written our script. This is the script that we have written. In this, you can see H cluster is a function which helps in performing hierarchical clustering. 
these are the properties we have considered all columns from previous components and this is a property view definition so through this dimensionality reduction we further reduce the variable from 15 to 10 so this is the variable order you can check in the summary of the model this is the result So this is the summary of order of significance for the variables. So we choose the first 1 to 10 in ascending order. Next we plot an ROC to understand which model is best suited for our data through a custom R script. For this we have made this ROC credit data component. We have written a script to consider all 8 models and their respective ROC, AUC, KS and Gini parameters. We would like to see this. So this is the script that we have written. Basic recursive partitioning, Bayesian N, general random forest, conditional interference, conditional inference trees, and so on. The performance of the model will be used to determine the area under the curve. Also, KS and Gini are calculated. The plotted ROC will be a plot between true positive and false positive value. We can see the summary. Here is a summary with AUC, KS, Gini values. So the, A, so the AUC, that is area under curve, helps to determine model performance more the AUC, better the model performance. This is the result for that particular script component and the summary. The summary contains the model name and the respective AUC, KS and Gini values. Here by observing we will find that lasso and neural network have highest AUC. The visualization contains the ROC for all models so we will go for the visualization we'll see a very beautiful ROC chart between the true positive rate and the false positive rate. So as Lasso has the highest value, we now score the data using Lasso. So we'll go to the next component. We'll view this. So we have again written a script. So this is a script for scoring the test data set for Lasso. We split the data into train and test. Train and test. We'll see the settings. Here we have considered none. The resultant dataset will contain the scored values for test dataset model using Lasso. In the properties, you can see that property view definition, there are some parameters. We can also choose the model name and top 10 dependent variables that are significant. So since we split so since we split the data set into training and testing the test data set is used for scoring so the last column will contain the score columns this is the score columns if the score value is greater than 0.5 that the customer is relatively should be more reliable This is again the logistic regression performance on the C curve between the true positive rate and the false positive rate. In the result, you can see that the customers having value 
score value greater than 0.5 will be comparatively good customers.